Per Eriksson. Uh, so here we are in Copenhagen, Denmark. And we're at the Dangleter Hotel. And we're here to, at the one Michelin star restaurant, Marshall. And we're here to see Andreas Ba, the chef. Let's find out about their way of cooking. Uh, they are focusing on creativity, quality and aesthetics. Let's meet Andreas and his team and hear about how they will create this 360 gastronomic experience here at Bangletary Hotel. Uh, the name Marshall, mm. where does it come from? The name Marshall is the founder of Hotel Dangleterre. So a little bit of history about the legacy of Dangleterre is that Chien Marshall, he started a small restaurant 250 years ago near the lakes of Copenhagen. And that small restaurant since that evolved to this fabulous hotel. Uh, how did you get into food uh, in the first place? It was uh, from a very early age, I would say. I started cooking uh, with my parents already when I was three years old. What in food was so interesting? I, I always found it interesting that you, you could work with your hands and it was actually it's a, it was a craftsmanship that you, you had to, to learn and you can, you can work on it, get better. And uh, uh, needless to say, when I started cooking, it was a tomato sauce or it was a pasta dish or something very easy at a, mm -hmm. a, a very young age. Uh, how was your journey then into the professional kitchen? I struggled in school, to be honest. I was not good on the bench. I had too much energy. I, I you know, as a creative mind, it's not always easy just to sit and, and be told what to do all the time. So after, after high school, I, I, you know, I thought, why not try to pursue your, your, your passion about cooking? and. There's a, a trade called Chef. Which restaurants did you get the chance to work in then? The first restaurant where I started my apprenticeship was a famous Danish restaurant in, 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 in Copenhagen called Kong Hans Keller. It's an institution here in, in, in the city. It was the first restaurant to get a Michelin star in Copenhagen in a, in a young age. I started when I was 19. Then I, I took a, a stagiaire job in Chicago at a three-star Michelin restaurant called La Linea. And then I went uh, over to another legend of the Danish gastronomy called Rasmus Grombeck. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing uh, chef working with vegetables. Uh, his restaurant is unfortunately closed, but he was um, a big inspiration for me and still is to this day. Mm -hmm. After that, I went to Geranium in uh, Parken for Rasmus Kofold, the uh, Cuse d'Or legend. Uh, three-star Michelin restaurant, the first we have in Denmark, and I worked there for a few years. And then I started here at Dangleterre uh, three years ago. So. Your guests uh, are expecting uh, a 360-degree mm -hmm. uh, fine dining mm -hmm. gastronomy experience when they come here. It's a sort of a three-dimensional mm -hmm. uh, experience. Mm -hmm. What's your idea on that? How do you create that full-fledged experience. When you visit a restaurant, there's three ground pillars that, that, that carries uh, an experience going into a restaurant. Uh, one thing is uh, the food, second thing is the, uh, the service, the third thing is the ambience in the room. All three has equal uh, importance to, to a guest having a, a, the right experience at a restaurant. The food needs to be excellent, needless to say, it needs to be what you expect of going into a big fine dining establishment with the best products. Uh, cooked to perfection, uh, served in a beautiful way. Uh, the service needs to be uh, up to standards, it needs to be uh, fulfilling in terms of uh, wines and pairings. Uh, you always feel like you're the center of attention. The, the last thing is, is, what I mean with the ambience is that you need to create an atmosphere around the guests that you, you can't, you know, you can't say and feel it, you can't see it, but it's there all the time. It could be uh, music playing, it could be the way the waiters walk in the room, the uh, level of, of volume, just you, you feel cozy, you feel relaxed, you feel like this is a place where I want to spend some time. If you were to explain for somebody mm. that's never eaten here mm. about your style of cooking, what would you say? I would call it timeless quality. Uh, our main focus here is, is about produce. It's not about fashion or, or trends. Every single dish is, is made up by a solid foundation where we take the best produce and, and treat it as elegantly and simple as possible. We try to use as much as we can here from the, the surroundings uh, of Copenhagen, our local farmers and our fishmongers, uh, but we use uh, pigeons from France as well and truffles from, uh, 
from Umbria. We really just want the food to taste amazing. So flavor is, is something we, we work a lot with. Uh, to be able to create the dishes mm. you're talking about, mm. uh, where do you find the right produce or products to be able to do that? We, we have a wide range of, of, of different purveyors. You know, we have one who's specialist in, in delivering cabbage. We have one fishmonger who's, who's the best in scallops. We have one who serves the best, gives us the best monkfish or turbots. We have one only for game, one only for one type of truffle, one type for another type of truffle. So it's basically to be very picky about what you receive and you know find the best small purveyors to, to bring in what we need as a, a, a top restaurant. What are you specifically looking for uh, in the produce or product? Uh, is it the taste or is it the freshness or is it the, the location of the... Quality is, is, is our main focus, of course it is, but uh, since we are sustainable, you know, size of restaurant as well, uh, we need some who, someone who can deliver, you know, the amounts uh, we, we want as well. I, I think it's nice with some story behind the products as well. I think it's nice with a little bit of storytelling that this game hunter has been hunting the best ducks for ages and deliver to, uh, to Her Majesty the Queen or something like that. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's always a, a good story connected to a good a product and make, make it even more interesting. It's a fantastic wine cellar like this. Uh, I can see lots of nice labels here yes. from uh, many of the best producers in the world, I guess. I agree. Uh, if you were to pick one producer and one of the wines that they make that is in the style of your cooking, which producer would you pick? And I can pick anything. You know, that would be... Why not any Latash? From 12th, uh, and then I will take it uh, along with our Canal Press, and then I will have a great night. Fantastic. <laughs> Many of the top chefs in the world, which you are one of, uh, are focusing on uh, the concept of no waste kitchen. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? There's two different branches in, 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 in the sustainable approach. One of them is minimizing the, uh, the waste. The other one is recycling the waste. To take the, the, the different types of, uh, of trimmings and offcuts and, and products and use them in different, uh, different ways. For example, a staff food for this vast hotel with 200 employees. So even though you get the uh, tenderloin home, you can use the trimmings to make an uh, excellent uh, bolognese for staff food. Or you can use it in uh, the offcuts in, in uh, mincing the meat for burger and room service. And when we have waste, we, we recycle all our waste in big bio containers, so we have a, uh, a garbage grinder for all, uh, all biodynamic waste. So basically, we, we try to have a no waste uh, policy of all biodynamic products. Everything is, is used for something. Uh, now you're in a fantastic restaurant, uh, Marshall. Fantastic setting here. Uh, you got your uh, one Michelin star. Uh, Lots of people here, mm -hmm. not only uh, in Dangleterre, the hotel mm -hmm. guests, but also people coming from the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, where will you go from now? I already achieved some of my dreams, you know, just being a head chef at a uh, place like uh, Marshall at the Hotel Dangleterre is a huge honor. And we have one Michelin star right now, but competitive as most top chefs are, you always try to see what's the ne next chapter we, we're going to open. And of course, given we have one Michelin star, you know, it would be un unambitious not to, to try to pursue the second star, of course. Just have a, 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 a full restaurant with, with happy guests, a, a good business, that's something we, we value as well. If you were to give an advice to a young person mm. that wants to become a chef like mm. yourself, what would you say? One word, patience, patience. But it takes, it takes years. There's no way you can make a shortcut. You, maybe you're born with, with some type of talent or, or, so, or gifts uh, in, in gastronomy, but you need to learn your basic uh, cuisine, travel around the world, uh, learn from the great masters, read your books, be uh, interested, and you know, it takes many years. So be patient and work your way up. Mm -hmm.